recording of an option should be coming up. Okay, hey everybody. So my name is Professor Kelsey Coase. I am a professor here at the Divination Academy. Um, if this is your first time here with us, I'm going to go over a little bit of housekeeping so you can learn a little bit about us. If you're a student with us, you're going to hear this many, many times. Um, hey, that's a fun. Hi, from the UK. I love it. Yay. I don't know what the time difference is, so I hope you're not like up too late or too early. Um, okay, so back to that. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I get distracted by the chat. You'll learn that. Um, so again, Divination Academy, if you haven't found us before, thank you so much for finding us. We are a free pagan academy. We believe that everything, that free, um, education should be free, accessible to all. So everything that we do and everything that we offer to you guys will always be free. Um, so if you want to learn more about us and if you want to enroll as a student, um, the number one way to get in contact with us is going to be through our Facebook page. I'm going to pop the link in the chat there for you. Just send us a DM saying you want to enroll as a student and one of our admins will reach out to you. Sometimes it can take a little bit. Sometimes it'll be right away. So just be patient with us. We do only have a handful of admins that answer lots of messages. Um, and then if you do enroll in the academy, um, you do end up getting access to our private Facebook community, our private Facebook chats. You get access to your professors pretty much all the time. Um, just a, It's just really awesome. Um, next, you'll get, get into the chats our YouTube page. So that's where almost all of our classes do get posted. Some of them are only for enrolled students. So that's another reason why you can enroll. Um, those will only be available to you in um, the Divination community. But most of them do go on the YouTube channel. This is where you'll find the ones that are available to everybody. Um, we have lots of them on there. I think we're up to like 140, lots of different topics like Enochian magic. Um, we have tarot, we have herbology, we have psychic and sensitivity training. We have dark, more of my dark goddess devotionals. We have moon magic. We have a lot of stuff on there. So just go check it out. There's so much stuff on there to look at. And then the last thing I'll put in here for you is going to be our website. Um, so our website is the next thing to find that you will find for us. There we have lots and lots and lots of resources. We have study guides, links to books, like links to professor's notes, links to information about our professors. Um, we have information about our certification programs. We offer our one-on-one -on -one private apprenticeships that we offer. Um, we have information on there about so much. So just go check it out. There's just so much on there. Um, there's a lot of information on there as well. If you are a student on how to get credit for classes that you watch on the YouTube. Um, so if you ever have any questions, you can look there and figure out how to do that as well. Um, so that is all I have for about the Academy. Um, I super hope that after today, if you this is the first time finding us, that you enroll. We would love to have you. Um, the next thing that I like to do is just a little bit about myself. Um, so again, my name is Professor Kelsey Coates. I have been a solitary practitioner for about 15 plus years. I consider myself, I am a gray practitioner, which means I pull from both paths that people call light and love and people call dark and baneful. Um, I don't view things that way. I view things energetically. I don't view things in a positive, negative connotation. I don't view things in this good, bad, evil. I don't do that. Um, I view things as light is simply the absence of darkness and darkness is simply the absence of light. Both need to happen to create balance. And I that is how I practice. I practice in balance and duality and greatness. Um, I also consider myself a mystic. I practice from multiple pantheons, multiple cultures, multiple paths. Um, I pull from everywhere. Um, I've studied from masters in shamanism, multiple different religions, multiple different pagan practices, witchcraft, magic, all across the board. Um, so I pull from everywhere. I'm very, very eclectic. And my magic is also very purifying and cleansing. So today a circle is going to be cast. I will be invoking. I will be summoning. Um, I have the ability to vessel with deities. And so my energy is very purifying and cleansing. I have been told by students to warn people. It may be a little overwhelming if you haven't experienced me before. Um, if you do get overwhelmed at all, please just ground yourself, drink some water, or grab any crystal that's associated to you. Um, if you happen to have lapis lazuli near you, um, that is very strongly associated to myself and to the main deities that I work with. So that will also help you ground with my energy as well. Um, the last little bit of disclaimer that I have is because we're doing a class on dark goddess devotionals, I want to set the prefer set the um, stage for how I approach these deities and how I expect 
um, you guys to approach these deities in my classes. So I, again, I do not view things as good versus bad. So if you're coming to learn about them, so you can learn about like the evil deities and things like that, that's not how I'm teaching them. I am teaching them as you need to come to them from an absolute place of reverence and respect. They, they are here to help you just as much as any light deity is. Um, I come to them with, like I said, absolute reverence and respect. They are there to help you, to guide you. They're not anybody to fear or to be afraid of any more than any other type of deity. So that is how we are approaching them. We aren't approaching them with any type of negative connotation. Um, so before we get started and jump into Eris, do we have any questions on any of that or anything about myself? Otherwise, we will jump right in. And before we get going, does anybody need the link to the study guide? If you're missing that, now is the time to ask before we start. Let me see anything popping up in the chat. Yes, please. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I just linked the study guide. Um, so I create study guides for every single one of my classes. Not every professor here does, but I do. Um, and I give these to you guys for free so you can have access to them. So if you want to take notes, you still can. But if you don't, this is literally everything I'm teaching off of today. Um, so the Greek goddess Eris. We'll start with an overview with her for first. And then I'm going to go through, if you haven't been here with me, I teach you where they show up in history, where they show up in archaeology. I teach you their mythological stories that are about them all different versions of those mythological stories. Um, I also teach you how to connect to them, what they stand for, how to worship them. And then I actually do summon and I bring them here and I invoke them for you to actually meet them. Um, so that is the structure of class today if you've not been here with me before. Um, so the Greek goddess Eris, a lot of people don't know about her. I feel like she's super, super forgotten. And I think it is a Damn shame. It is an absolute damn shame that she is so forgotten. She is a force to be reckoned with. She is so fierce. She literally, she, there's a lot of different versions of her, but the most common one that's accepted is that she's the brother of, she's a sister of Ares. So she's a tied to war and destruction. And she's there, like, she's literally in the chariot with him on the battlefields. Like, but she's more ferocious than him. And every story that's told about her, her sword is way more bloody. Like people fear her on the battlefield. Like soldiers will literally like fall to the ground and pretend that they're dead. So like they, she doesn't come after them. Um, She is so fierce. She will stay on the battlefield far after Ares leaves, like far after Ares leaves. Like she's the last one there. Um, She is very like, she is just, she is ferocious. Um, she is seen also, most people know the most famous event in Greek history is the Trojan War. Most people don't realize like she's, she's the cause of it, partly. Like she plays a major role in the Trojan War happening. Um, there's a couple of different versions. And I'm, when I go through the mythology of like other strings being pulled beside behind the scenes that caused her to do what she did, um, but she's the cause of the Trojan War. Um, she there's a mythology that has to deal with her that actually leads to the reason for why Helen gets abducted and gets abducted by Paris and ends up with Paris, and then the whole war happens, and then you know, follow Troy. Um, so she's a big part of that. Um, so Eris is considered the goddess of strife and discord. Um, if you work with Roman deities or heard about Roman deities before, her counterpart would be Discordia. Um, her opposite to her in the Greek pantheon is Harmonia. She's also considered attached to chaos, um, strife and discord, chaos. Um, there's a couple different myths about her parentage. Um, one of the, I would say this is the second most commonly accepted one, is going to be Zeus and Hera are her parents. Um, the most commonly accepted one is this one that has two different versions. One is that she's the daughter of Nyx. Therefore, she doesn't have a father and she's born of pure chaos and born of the void. Um, there's another version to where she's actually the daughter of chaos and the daughter of the void. Therefore, she cannot have a mother. Um, so the most common one that I see accepted is that she's the daughter of Nyx. Therefore, she has no father. She's born of chaos. She's born of darkness. She's born of the dark night. Um, that's the most common and one that I see accepted for her parentage. Um, but the Zeus and Hera one, that's where you get her being Ares' brother. That's where you get her being Ares' brother. Otherwise, if she, when you see her accepted as the daughter of Nyx, he, she's really just a counterpart. She's really just like the feminine counterpart 
to Aries, not necessarily his sister. Um, so again, that's kind of where you see it. She also had a son, um, many children, actually. The most famous one that people know about is actually Strife. Um, she brought him with him on the chariot. She rode alongside him on the chariot while she was fighting in the war of Aries. Like, they're very particular about that in her myths. Um, she, it was said to be the one that loved causing pain and inflicting pain and suffering and destruction the most. Um, I feel like that's a little bit of a misconception. I feel it's a little bit of the gods trying to give one deity kind of like a bad rep. Because if you also look at her, she fights for injustice fiercely. Like, if she truly believes in something, that's when she's going to be there standing up and fighting. And, like, it's injustice for her that she fights with. Um, so it, depending on how you look at her myth and how you view her, you're going to see her as somebody that's very destructive and causing suffering or you're going to see her that's there to really teach you how to stand up and be fierce for what you believe in, fierce for yourself, fierce for your boundaries. Um, that's really how I use her, and I'm going to talk about that later. Um, but attending on the myths, she's viewed both ways. Um, because, again, the Greek gods, they need one deity that they're just going to blame all, all their manipulations on. And she kind of seems to be a really big scapegoat for them. Um, she's known to cause famine and disease um, as well, which gives her a bad rep. But if you think about it, famine and disease need to happen because things need to die off in order for rebirth and regrowth to happen. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just people don't like talking about it. People don't like feeling about it. A lot of times in iconography and in images, she's portrayed as a demon and specifically a winged demon, specifically black wings. Um, I really stress that point because that seems to be something that comes across many different cultures and then many different pantheons. When it comes to dark goddesses of war, the Morrigan is portrayed that way. You have Lilith that ends up being portrayed that way. Um, anybody that's connected to chaos, they usually, they, they like to do that too. Um, they like to add those like demon-like black wings too, um, but that's typically how she's portrayed. I think it's a visual, a, a visual of empowerment. I don't see it as something of fear. Like, I think it's absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Like it doesn't terrify me. To me, it's just absolutely empowering. Um, but again, depending on your viewpoint and how you look at her, that's how, and the patriarchy, that's a big reason I think why she was portrayed that way. They were trying to blow down independence. Um, she, like I said, she was literally insatiable for bloodshed, like literally insatiable. And it was because she was fighting for what she believed in. Like she believed for what she was fighting in for. So she was going to fight until the death. She was going to make sure that she fulfilled her goal she fulfilled her purpose like she did what she needed to do um to protect those who needed protecting she's really well known for protecting children um and animals um and those who can't speak for themselves um whether it be like disabled or those who have been through trauma like she's really really known to be drawn to those and to help those um in those needs um so roles of heiress within greek mythology actually why don't i jump back to the chat give me a second Okay, does anybody have any questions so far on the overview with her? Because that's really an overview with her. I'm going to really kind of start doing her role in the Pantheon, um, her mythologies that she attaches into and things like that. But that's the overview of her right now. Um, any questions so far? I see we've had a couple of people join too. If you need the study guide, please let me know. I know, honey, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. Um, to be honest, like, I love demi humans. Like demi humans are just, uh, I love demi humans. Like they're just, yes, I yes, that's one of my favorite when it comes to demi humans. Like I, I love demi humans. Okay, I don't see any other questions popping up or hands coming up. Yeah, fabulous. So let's jump back in. Okay, so Eris in the Greek mythology, um, she's known to cause division between groups of friends, neighbors, married couples, causing discord and cause like sparking war and hatred. Um, that's that's her role. That's what she's known for. That's that's her role. Um, again, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes division needs to happen between a couple for the for them to actually sit there and look and do the shadow work to realize that they're having problems that they were not discussing that needs to be worked on. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily a problem to cause division between a group of th friends all the time because again. If that's something that's going to cause a problem like so quickly, so easily, there might be some shadow work that needs to happen on that relationship to figure out why, like to figure out why something could divide that so easily. It's so, like, I don't necessarily see it as a bad thing, but this is her role in her division, um, her role in this within the pantheon. 
Um, she was known to, some people say that she's known to be able to go into an individual's body and affect their body and mind, which would cause them to go mad and have disease. Um, personally, I think that this is what's just an explanation for mental health and mental illnesses that people are just trying to make an explanation for. But that is a role that she was given um, within Greek mythology and also within culture. Um, they, she was said to be the blame for that. Um, likewise, when it comes to her, she was the opposite of harmonia, justice. They could not coexist. They literally couldn't even be in the same place. Like if, if like literally if Eris showed up, like justice had to leave. Like they literally could not even be in the same place. Um, same as long with her children, lawlessness and murder. Um, they could not be in the same place as those two deities as well. Um, there's a couple of stories actually of them literally leaving the room. And then the main one, that's a big reason why Eris actually wasn't included. Um, when I talk about Eris and the golden apple and the wedding and all of that fun stuff, I'm going to break that down a little bit later. But she's also referred to as the nurse of war um, because, and this is in a sense to where she would literally sit there and she would stir these men that were literally like about to be like dying to stand up, start fighting again and continue killing each other. Like she was like, she was kind of like almost, it was like almost like a second win she was thought to give them. Um, and it was just like the second form of battle that she would be giving them. Um, there's a couple different stories of that. I have it listed in my sources too for you to like read those later if you'd like. Um, some of the positive elements to her are a lot of people like to pull her up and use her to stop them from themselves from being like lazy and to start working and get motivated. The energy of chaos and the fierceness and the passion that comes behind her um, really, really brings that motivation to get goals going, to get things doing, to be a defender of justice, to do activism, to get a part of your community, to rise up and be a part of the move, about a part of other movements that mean a lot to you rather than just saying they mean a lot to you and sharing things on social media because they, you think that that's enough, but actually getting your passion to move, actually turning your activism, activism into action. That's what she really, really brings out and what she really, really inspires. Um, she also helps you to be able to understand that like chaos may be like chaotic and there may be chaos in your life, but that interruption in that flow directs you to the next, the next channel of energy you need to be going on to. It directs you onto that next path into life you need to be going on to. For, for me personally, like with whatever thing I've really noticed whenever like chaos really becomes a thing and I really need to start working with chaos magic and I need to start like really focusing on that and it's really showing itself in my life and starting to bring things up. It's because I need to like, have it completely restructured because I'm not on the right path that I need to be on. And as soon as I start looking at things and restructuring things, things start to get a little less chaotic. I start to be able to work in it with it in a way more like positive way to be able to use that energy to flow rather than feel overwhelmed and overstimulated, which is how I start to feel like when I start to let that build up. Um, so she really, really helps us be able to understand that movement and move that movement forward. Um, she's also known as a warrior of sacred truth and truth telling because like she stands for justice and she stands for fighting and she's so passionate. Like she has no time for that bullshit. Like she has no time to sit here and to not be truthful, to not be impeccable with your words, to not say what you mean, to not have the clear boundaries of others. She gives you that strength and that courage to be able to stand up for yourself, to be able to have that stamina, to be able to hold those boundaries and to be able to say like, no, like this is what's happening because this is what's for my best, for my well-being and for the well-being of others. Um, she makes it to where you're no longer willing to compromise your morals, your truths, who you are, your authentic nature. Like she does this for me more than Lilith ever has. Um, she is like the energy that she's pulling through through the collective is amazing. And I'm going to talk about that in a lot more detail like, a little bit later, but she is really affecting the collective. Um, and this is how she's doing that. Um, specifically in the me too movement specifically in the me too movement and feminism like she's very much affecting that um so the family with eris like i said there's a couple different stories homer has one version of it which she's the brother of aries which again that makes her parents have to be zeus and hera like that's just it there's no other way around that so that and that's what homer's story is um there's also another different version which is hesius's version which is actually older um and it claims that she's the daughter of nyx um you're and then saying that nyx and eurobis the god of darkness possibly created her and coupled to create her um again that would be really tricky most people and most the most um archaeologists and most 
<clears throat> historians agree with the fact that it's Nyx and she has no father. Um, they agree with Hesiod's. Um, that's the most commonly accepted version. Um, she is said to be um, so because of this, and because she's in the Hesiod's great poem um, titled The Theology, she's actually like one of the oldest goddesses to be in existence then because she's in that because of that she's literally there from the beginning of the universe that text tells the, the greeks like the beginning of the universe it tells that story it tells the universe coming from the chasm of the chaos goddess and how chaos later then spawned gaia and then the earth and then Eurybus and then nyx so like her like her to be mentioned there and to be mentioned as nyx's daughter puts her as literally one of the oldest goddesses in the pantheon like hands down like she is literally one of the oldest goddesses like that can't that literally can't be argued with um nyx is also said to give birth to other daemons um asexually as well that that would end up being considered like her siblings so you have blame and misery and nemesis you have deceit you have old age as well and then you have eris which is considered the strife discord um chaos all of that um eris also has a lot of children um She's known as the mother of dark deities. And Hesiod is famous, like in his work, um, Hesiod's is work in the, that the ancient text that he's, I'm so sorry, um, the, theonog I, the theonology um, that he lists her in. He lists a series of other gods and goddesses and spirits, and he lists those as her children. Um, it's a collection of malevolent spirits that literally they exist to worsen the conditions of gods and men. Um, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, so please bear with me. Most of my study is through text, but um, they're the evil spirits which plague mankind, um, aka these are the demons that were inside Pandora's box. Eris's children. This is who was inside Pandora's box. Um, so they were, these were all the demons that were said to be the evil that she spawned. Um, I have a whole list in the study, guys. So she's got forgetfulness, starvation, lawfulness. Like there's, there's an endless list. There's pains and griefs and fights and battles and murders and grievances and lies and disputes and manslaughters and battle slaughters. Her most famous ones are going to be forgetfulness, um, which she is act the forgetfulness is actually the deity that's associated with the river in Hades. Um, lawfulness, um, so dysnomia which is also another one of her super famous children, murder, dispute, lies, famine, like all of those evil spirits. Those are the ones that were stored inside Pandora's box. Those are her children. Um, so that's why she's considered the mother of demons. Um, in, sorry, the mother of dark deities, not mother of demons, dark deities, um, because they are also considered deities. They're not just demons, they're considered deities. They have, they have that level of power. Um, so pretty much in ancient Greece, as a culture, wherever there was pain or suffering in ancient Greece, they blamed her. Um, they said that they had provoked her, they had made her mad, they had made the goddess of chaos mad, the goddess of, chaos, of discord mad, um, or one of her children. Um, and that was the reason why they were had experiencing famine, why they're experiencing disease, why they're experiencing war, um, why they're experiencing, you know, economic downfall, um, anything like that. Um, so in culture, culturally, historically, like that she was blamed, literally, that's for almost everything. She was a big scapegoat for that. Um, okay, so we're going to stop there for a second. I'm going to jump back to the chat. And then I'm going to break down her actual mythological stories that she pops up in. So I'm going to jump into the chat. If you guys have any questions, you can put it in there now. You can raise your hand and go off mic as well if you'd like. Their names are more for what they represent, and people also claim they cause those things. So it depends on how you portray them. Um, and it depends on how you look at deity energy as well. So for example, like me, I work with deity energy in a couple different ways. So if I'm working with it in an archetype energy, I would say that those names represent that archetype energy that they're representing across humankind. But if I'm looking at the way that I work with deities, like when I'm summoning and invoking and wrestling them, I look at them as if they're their own separate entity like like i am as a human being so then i would consider those their actual names and then then in the stories they are also considered the ones that cause everything um so it's a combination of both and it also depends on how you're working with them uh, i don't know what this yeah that's what happened to me just as i found the screw okay not sure what that means but i hope it's something good yes it is um okay. I don't want to get into too much details, 
It's just that I had a problem with a group before this. Uh, and I said I wouldn't say anything. Uh, me and my sister bailed out um, because of a certain issue. And I found this group just as I was switching. So, as you were saying, the chaos. Uh, sometimes, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that, yes. makes sense. that makes sense. That makes sense. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. You're good. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. No, just keeping up. Just trying to keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> am I talking too fast? If I am, please let me know, guys, because I am notorious for doing that. And I will do my very best to be intentional to slow down. I have a note even to tell me to slow down. So No, you're doing fine. It's just that I, I type slow. That's my problem. <laughs> okay, so I need to slow down a little bit. Okay, I will do my very best. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so when it comes to her stories, um, I have it written down in super detail, the study guide, um, but I'm I'm going to go through and tell it to you. So it may not sound exactly like it is in there, but I have it super retail, detailed super, super detailed in the study guide for you. Um, okay, so one of the most famous stories with her is Eris and the Apple of Discord. Um, the golden apple of Discord in some story titles, and some people refer to it that way. Um, this is the start of the Trojan War. This is the backstory to the start of the Trojan War. There's also a little bit of backstory before this, and I'll give you that as well. So there's a wedding that's going to be happening, and the wedding... <coughs> Give me one second, guys. <laughs> hmm. um, so Zeus had arranged for Peleus to marry the sea nymph Titus. Um, he was a hero, and there's a whole backstory to how he even needed to be able to read to be able to marry her. He pretty much had to win her and capture her over. There's a little bit of rape involved, but that's a whole other thing. Um, so he had arranged for this marriage to happen, and all of the deities, literally all the deities, every single deity in the Greek pantheon, every single god and goddess was invited to the festivities. Every single one was invited to the church, the temple. They were invited to the wedding. They were invited to be there, except for Eris. Eris wasn't invited. She was not allowed to be there because her being the deity of discord and strife and chaos, People didn't want her there at, the, at a wedding ceremony. Like, who wants her there at a marriage? Who wants her there at a wedding ceremony? Like, who wants discord and strife there? So she wasn't invited. Now, there's a couple of different versions of what happens next. So I'm going to tell you the different versions. So she's walking down the street. She's pissed. She's walking towards the temple. She's like, I'm going to go cause some mayhem. I'm going to show up anyways, even though I'm not invited, because I'm pissed. Like, everybody else is invited but me. Like, this is bullshit. Like, I should be able to be there. And so she's walking down the street. She comes across a cart of apples on the side of the road. Um, she starts digging through them and she notices there's a golden apple there. In a, one version, she writes the word on words on it. In another version, in a, actually two different versions, the words are already there. But on the apple, it's inscribed, this belongs to the fairest of them all. This is where there's a couple different versions as well. In one version, she sees this apple, she looks at it, it says this, and she goes, hmm, I can cause some massive chaos with this. I can cause some massive chaos with this apple. I can show up at the wedding with this, and some shit's definitely going to go down. So she, like, develops this plan of what she's going to do. In, in another version, Zeus actually left that apple there and it is said that Zeus left that there for her to find it because she knew what she was going to do with it and he wanted to start the war with Troy and Sparta to start um, controlling the population of the world. In another version, Aphrodite left that apple there for her to find. And the reason why Aphrodite left that apple there for her to find was because Aphrodite wanted to get control and access to Helen of Troy because her father had massively pissed Aphrodite off. Um, so Helen's father had decided that Aphrodite was the deity that was causing women to be unfaithful to their husbands because she was the deity of love. And so he had decided in order to try to stop women from being unfaithful to their husbands, that in every single temple, they put shackles 
actual physical metal shackles on every single one of deity of Aphrodite's statues. They literally physically shackled her within their temples, which pissed her the pissed her off. Like she was livid. So she promised Helen's father that three of his daughters, including Helen, who's the fairest of them all, like she's the most beautiful in all the lands, they will forever be unfaithful to their husbands. She vows it, that this will be a thing. If you're going to say that I'm causing this and you are going to shackle me my temples, I vow that this will be a thing. So it is said that she saw this opportunity with this wedding. She knew exactly how um, Eris was going to respond. So she planted it there with those words on it so that she can make the next events happen and get her access to Helen of Troy. So Eris starts walking down the temple. So this is where the stories converge again. Eris is walking towards the temple. She gets into the temple. She literally, all she all she does, it's so funny because all she does, she takes this apple with the words, this belongs to the fairest of them all. And all she does is she throws it. She throws it into the middle of everybody. She throws it into the middle of the festivities. She turns around and she walks away. So they pick up the apple and look at it. And this is golden apple. And it says this belongs to the fairest of them all. So what happens? There's three deities. They're like, well, I'm the fairest of the salt of them all. Like this, this should belong to me. Like this apple should belong to me. Like this, this is mine. Like this, this belongs to me. And it becomes this big, huge fight, this big, huge contest. The three deities, I'm sure you can probably guess on who they're going to be. It's Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite. They believe they're the, like, they all believe that they're the fairest of them all. They're the most beautiful, like, all of that. So they're literally fighting about it. And Zeus is like, okay, like, this is ridiculous. This cannot continue. Like, you guys cannot be doing this. This is getting out of hand. So he decides to step in. And he decides that Paris, the human Paris, the human hero Paris, is actually going to have a contest. And he's going to judge. And he's going to decide which one is the fairest of them all. And so all three of these deities, they come to them, they come to Paris, and they make him promises of what they're going to give him in order to be able to win the competition. And so what ends up happening is Hera offers Paris political power. Athena offers Paris wisdom in the skill and art of war. And Aphrodite offers Paris the most beautiful mortal woman in all the world, Helen. What does Paris do? Paris picks Helen. He's a peace and mortal man. Of course, he's going to want the most beautiful mortal woman in the world. So he picks Helen and then the Trojan War starts. So that is one of the most famous stories that Eris is involved in. Um, one of the most famous like mythologies. That's where you get um, the gold apples being a correspondence and a symbol for it, especially golden apples. Um, and then again, like I feel like that's why she's it sucks that she's so forgotten because like she literally is like the cause and like a big, a big part of like one of the most famous events within all of that pantheon's history. The next version, the next myth that she's a part of actually has to do with where she gets that title of being like discord of marriage and relationships um oh actually i'm gonna so hold on i'm not gonna do that one first she does briefly pop up with hercules actually there is a small actual story with him and hercules and aesop fables um to where hercules is actually walking down like the super super narrow path um he looks on the ground and he sees an apple lying on the ground um and he tries to smash it with his club and after being struck struck with the club it actually swells up to twice its size um, so he strikes it again and then it gets even bigger and he keeps blocking his way more and more and more. And then it is said that Athena comes up and is like, Hercules, what are you doing? Like, don't be surprised by your confusion. Like, that's Eris. Like, she's literally just messing around with you. Like, walk away and leave it alone. Um, so she's also mentioned there with Hercules as well. Um, and then the next story that she's, um, is that has to do with marital strife. That has to do with uh, Polytechnus and Aidon. Um, so he was, they were a super, super happy couple. Um, Polytechnus was a carpenter and he had his wife, Aedon. Um, they actually were so happy and they were so in love that they thought that they could boast that they loved each other more than Zeus and Hera did. 
honestly, I feel like anybody can say that. Zeus and Hera's relationship is ridiculous. Um, so because of that comment and because she was so pissed off by it, Hera actually sends Eris to punish them. And what Eris has them do is what Hera has Eris do is Eris breathes the spirit of competition into the both of them. And what the competition is, is that they have to build a chariot. Um, Polytechnus has to build a chariot and Adonis has to weave tapestry. And the bet is whoever like finishes first, the loser gets to decide like if they can bring in a female servant or not. So what ends up happening, they go through the competition, they do it all. Aedon actually ends up winning and she wins the competition. And therefore, like he, like Polytechnus actually like ends up having a lot of resentment towards her because she gets really boastful about it. They start fighting all the time. And then um Aedon's father actually brings Aedon's sister home for a visit. And then because Polytechnus is so resentful and so mad, he actually rapes her sister. Um, which then makes her ending up becoming her servant and this whole big thing. Like this whole big thing within family, between strife, between marital strife. So this is just like an example of like how she can be used to cause discord and strife and why she's tied to marital um, marital discord as well. Um, if you want to read the story in like full detail, I did break it down in full detail in the study guide. That's just a paraphrase of that story um, for you, but you can break it down. Like I said, I broke it down in full detail. I wrote it all out for you. Um, in popular culture now, you actually see her kind of pulling up a little bit more, um, especially recently because people are getting a lot more interested in chaos magic, people are getting a lot more interested in dark deities, and I think that's because what she's doing with the collective. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit here, but she also showed up a lot more because in the 1960s, there's actually a new religion that was kind of founded. Um, first, it was founded as kind of like a parody religion, but then it really took roots, and it's called Discordianism. Um, and it's a it's an order and they believe that disorder and illusionary byproducts of the are like are literally like the byproducts of our human nervous system. So they literally pretty much believe that there are overseers within our region, within our penile glands that actually cause like disorder and illusions. And like that's what our human nervous system is. Um, it's really, really interesting. Um, I have looked into it a little bit, but I haven't studied it. But I just wanted to briefly touch about that because that is a thing. She does actually have a religion completely dedicated to her. Um, and then chaos magic. I have met maybe only a handful of practitioners that practice chaos magic that don't use Eris now. Um, previously, maybe like seven, eight years ago, not so much, because um, I personally just started using her um, two years ago. But now um, I've only met a handful that don't use her now, um, especially because of what she's doing collectively, astronomically, where she is in our astronomy because she's in our charts, she's in our astrological charts as well. Um, so she, like pop culture-wise, modern day-wise, like she is becoming a lot more prevalent. You are starting to see her a lot more because a lot more witches are starting to embrace chaos magic as well. They're starting to embrace the beauty of it. They're starting to become a lot more eclectic um, and they're starting to not be so afraid of it. Um, so that's where you'll see her popping up as well a lot is with chaos magic specifically. Like she will pop up there a lot. Um, a little bit later, I'm going to give you a rundown of what chaos magic is briefly, but I'm not going to teach right now how to do that or anything like that. That's a way more advanced thing. And I'll teach that a little bit later on on how to, on, on how to do chaos magic. Um, so I'm going to stop here to see if you guys have any questions about her myths at all before I talk about her astrologically, because she actually is a planet. If you didn't know that, she's a planet. Um, she shows up in our chart. She's affecting us collectively, energetically. Um, so we'll talk about that part of her next. Someone gave me a bunch of their Hecate items. They no longer need us as wanted. Among them were four apple candles. How could I use these Eris, or should I keep them for Hecate? Um, you can use them for whoever, whatever deity you want. I would just cleanse them and reconsecrate them. I would just make, and honestly, anytime you get new tools from anybody, make sure you cleanse, you purify, and you reconsecrate them. And then you get to choose what you use that tool for. And if your practice says that you can only use that tool for one specific deity or entity or energy, that's totally fine. I personally use things for many, many different things. Um, it just, it depends. Like I just always repurify it, cleanse it and reconsecrate it. So yeah, you could definitely use them for, I would, I would, I don't see why you couldn't. 
Okay, I don't see any other questions at all. I hope I broke down her story well enough because I like there's a, quite a few different versions. And I feel like people who even know about her, which is so few, they know that one. Um, and I just I feel like Aphrodite, like she's so manipulative, and people like forget that about her. They focus on like how loving she is, but if you really look at her stories, like Aphrodite schemes, man, like she schemes and she manipulates. And, like if you piss her off, like who? Yeah, she is definitely like she is definitely like head mean girl, not just a mean girl, but like she is like Lo Regina George, like she is Regina George, like that, like that is her, like that, that is Aphrodite, like so, like it's it's just I I wanted to make sure to like touch on that because like she it's so important and Zeus too, like he's such a dick, like he's such a dick. <laughs> um. Okay, so we'll jump into the next portion here. So astronomically, she is a planet. She is actually one of the largest known planets. Also, small fun fact, she's the reason why Pluto ended up being taken off as a planet. <laughs> she is literally the cause for that. Um, they discovered her as a dwarf planet. And they're like, well, what the hell? Um, if she's like the same size as Pluto, then Pluto can't be a planet. Pluto's just like, we're going to take him out. Like, we can't have so many dwarf planets just running around. Um, so they, like, she's actually the reason why they pulled Pluto. It's really interesting. I thought that was super funny. Because um, chaos, like, that's what she, that's what she represents. She comes in to, like, tear things up. Um and she, like she said, like I said, she is a dwarf planet. Um, it takes about 557 years for Eris to orbit the sun. Um, so she does move like a little bit slower um, with her rotation um, and her distance ranges. She's also incredibly, incredibly, incredibly dense. For her being a dwarf planet, like she's incredibly dense. She also comes very close to the sun and Neptune and Pluto as well, um, which is also why like her movement is the way it is. Um, she was discovered in 2005. Um, photographs were taken of her in 2003, but we really discovered like what she was and what she was, what she was, what she was in 2005. Um, they first actually nicknamed her Xena. So if you remember that when we had a, like a dwarf moon, like a dwarf planet named Xena, like named after this was actually like the first name that they gave her and then they decided that they were going to switch that name they decided it didn't make any sense they actually switched her to gabriella and then they named her heiress in september 2006 so again i love that because like she represents collectively bringing in chaos and turning things up and there was chaos just in naming her like they literally officially announced three different names for her so i just think it's i, I think it's fabulous that she did that um, and then they actually kept her moon named Gabriella. Um, I'm sorry, the, the moon that she had attached to Gabriella, they named her just dysnomia, which is actually goddess of lawlessness, which is their daughter. Um, I apologize. I take that back. They did not keep that. They changed it. Um, I just think it's super interesting, too, that all the new planets that we're finding, they're naming after, like, goddesses lately. And they're naming, like, they're going for, like, Greek, like, uh, I just, I just love it. I, because it's a collective. Um. So that's her, like, who the planet is, what she is, where she's located, all of that, um, when she showed up and things like that. Um, astrologically, because, like, what she does and, like, who she is and the, con like, the energy that she energy that she provides um she does show up in your chart now um she is part of your chart she's one of the ask like she's one of the plans that will show up that will affect you um not that any astrologers are using her but if you can find one that does it's fantastic um i think i linked a couple of sites that actually include her in when you look at your chart um she does visit each and every single one of your signs and then she spends decades in those signs um so right now she's in aries and she's going to be in aries actually until 2044 um so if you think about it too like we're getting like this very like chaotic like divine feminine like turning things upside down like this movement to fight injustice and power and passion and then you have it in aries so you have even more passion, you have even more movement, you have even more energy, like on top of that. Um, and again, she spends like, because of her movement and how kind of like slow she is, she has a lot of eclipses that happen within her, um, lots of different trines and throughout history, like within her as well, um, where she spends like, she spends a lot of time like in those signs. She, like, like I said, it's gonna be till 2044 and then she's gonna move into Taurus um but and then she's gonna stay there for quite a few decades before she moves again um she's considered more of like a generational planet because of this 
Um, and then because like, she entered Aries in 1926, so like she's she's there for like a really long time. Um, so like she's like that's why she's again considered a generational planet. Um, because she is gonna stay within that generation. That's how long she's gonna be within that sign, within that zodiac sign. Um, she's really attached to the rise of the women and the divine movement and the feminine. This is where she's affecting us collectively because of her fight for injustice, because of her representing the shadow of feminine, of the of feminine, but not like, again, like it's, it's in a way to where she is not going to just show you, like she is going to push you in the direction that you need to go. She's going to make sure you have that flow, that movement. She's not there to just show you the right way. She's going to get you moving. She's going to stand next to you. She's going to have her sword bloodier than yours, and she's going to fight next to you and stand up for you. Examples where we see her doing this in collective in history, in the Roaring Twenties, this is when she arrived. She entered in Aries in 1926. During the Roaring Twenties, the new woman was born. Like women in the Roaring Twenties, they did start to stand up. They did start to move. The Like they did start to defy society's standards. They started to wear, you know, more provocative clothing. They started to act different. They were smoking. They were drinking. They were partying. They were with the men. Like they started to gain a little bit more political power. Like they won the right to vote in 1920s. Like they were able to start breaking out of their domestic shell. They were able to start talking about their sexuality. They were like, again, smoking in clubs. Like she arrived then. She brought that collective energy with. She brought that shaking up energy with. Um, when we visually discovered her and like that merging warrior woman really started to come out, like she really, really started to present herself. Um, she, we would just, like I said, we visually discovered her in 2005. The Me Too movement kicked off in 2006. Like that's when we really started, like the Me Too movement really had its first like really big kickoff was in 2006, right after like we visually identified her. We visually named her. Like we had a lot of movement, a lot of growth, a lot of change at that time. Um, Harvey Weinstein, like that stuff was happening. Um, wait, no, that was that was 2017. No, it was 2006. No, 2017. Um, Women's March in 2017. Uranus, the planet of radical change. She was in a trine with Uranus. That brought out the, the warrior woman as well. That brought out that collective tension. We had our women's march then. We had a lot of Me Too movement. We had a lot of people coming out and talking about sexual violence, talking about sexual assault, standing up for women's rights. Um, and then, again, I don't... I hate it because, you know, 2020, we know what happened in 2020 and she started to be there. 2022, she showed up as well. And we are, you know, hmm. Roe v. Wade, which side note, this is actually where she showed up for me personally. This is when I got introduced to Eris. Um, Roe v. Wade getting overturned, shattered my soul. Um, hearing that, watching that live, being a part of that, um, it I literally crumbled to the ground. Um, Roe v. Wade getting overturned. Um, being given the understanding that my fellow humans cannot see that I have the same rights that they do, um, that I'm not valued the same as them, and that I, I literally couldn't handle it. Um, and she, that's when she presented herself to me. Um, I hate apples, actually. I absolutely hate them. I don't like them. I don't eat them. I hate the taste of them in any way, shape, or form. And it was literally all I wanted to eat and all I craved. It was literally all I wanted. It I literally could not like get away from the taste. It was in my mouth all the time. Um, they were popping up like everywhere for me. And like I was literally just like an absolute despair. Like I was, I was literally like falling apart. And in a way to where it's like I wanted to know what I could do and like how I could make a change and how I could get a part of this, because I wanted to be a part of it so much more before it got overturned, but I kept making excuses and saying that other things were more of a priority. And then like she, like I said, like she really liked the taste and everything. Like I literally couldn't, that's all I wanted. Um, and this was after my son was born too. So I was going through a huge transformation with that. And she showed up and like, she literally was like lift, lifting me off the ground to let me know, like, I'm going to be there for you. And like, this is what we're going to do. And like, she gave me like that motivation, that plan. Literally the next day I founded my, my activism group. I started working for Pro-Choice Minnesota. I started working for Planned Parenthood. I started doing protests. I started doing everything I could. I've now helped write laws. I've now helped write, 
I have now helped pass the PRO Act in Minnesota, which is the most liberal abortion laws in the entire country. Um, I like, so literally like what she brings to you, the movement she brings to you, like she brings you that support. She brings you that energy where like you are going to fight no matter what, and you are going to have somebody next to you that's going to be there with you the whole time. And she is going to make sure that like you feel that. Um, but like I said, like she literally like lifted me up and was like, no, like I get that you're in despair and you have every right to be in despair, but what are you going to do about it? Like, what are you going to do about it? You have your son now and like, is this the world that you want him staying in? And so like, it really, like she really, really brings that up. Um, so like, again, personally, that's how she really connected to me. And that's how a lot of people that I know, like connect to her. And that's how she's affecting the collective. That's the energy she's bringing to the collective. You have so many more activists and people standing up now. And this is why, this is why, like, this is the energy she's really, really stirring that up. Um, but I think the, down, the downside is, is I think too many activists are not taking the time to work on shadow work and they need to do that in order to actually do the activism correctly and right and be able to get the full impact. So just like make sure we're doing that as well. Like if you choose to like go that route and like use her in this way, like make sure you're doing the shadow work alongside with her. Um, because if you're not, then you're not going to be able to get much further with that. Um, okay, so after that side note, I was going to talk about it anyways, but this is just kind of where it ended up. Um, so finding her in your birth chart, um, there are a lot of different symbols and glyphs that can be used for Aries, but one of the most common ones is a glyph that's a combination of Pluto and Venus and the planet Mars. It's a circle with an arrow pointing down. Um, there are quite a few different, like like I said, free calculators that can use it. Astro.com, you can get it in there. And if you do an extended chart selection, you can select Aries and she will be there. Um, you will be able to get her like there. Um, that symbol, the cross between Venus and Mars, um, I think it's literally just because of mythology and that's why it makes perfect sense um, for that to be the symbol and why it's connected to that. Um, in her birth chart, so unless you were born before 1926, she's not gonna be a birth chart. So I think we're good. <laughs> um, so she will be in your birth chart. Um, and everybody after 1926, like she will be in your birth chart. She will affect your birth chart. Um, and like, it's just, it's really amazing what she does. Um, Cause what she really shows you in your birth chart and like how she can be interpreted in your birth chart is how you can overcome crises, like how you specifically will overcome crisis and trauma in your life and how you can do it in a way that brings compassion for yourself and for others. Um, so that's really where she show, what she'll show you in your chart. Like huge thing for me like huge thing is like she really really shows you like how you personally will overcome a crisis in your life um not specifically trauma a crisis trauma and crisis are different those are very different levels very different things um so like how like crisis as a whole um in the your birth chart she also shows you like how you can need to strive harder to be able to grow like where you really really need to actually strive and put your motivations in to be able to grow She'll show you where you can no longer be in denial because she's, like I said, she gives it you impeccable with your words and truth. Like she, she doesn't have time for bullshit. So she will show you like where you will no longer be allowed to be in denial before. If it's about your marriage, if it's about your relationships, if it's about your life, if it's about your finances, like that, like she will show you that. Okay. Um, she will also show you where your battles are that you want to fight to the end for. So where your true passions are that you want to fight for. She has the ability to show you that in your chart. Um, she also has the ability to show you within your chart is how, when, and where you're going to shake up the status quo. Like how you yourself are going to shake up society, how you're going to shake up the status quo, like how you're going to be different, how you're going to liberate yourself from traditional ways. She's going to show you in your chart how you yourself are going to do things in your own way. She's going to show you in your, heart, in your chart how you're going to be resourceful. And then also your general sense of like where you feel abandoned or forsaken or condemned, whether it's coming from like family or friends or other area or like past life or anything like that, it will show you like where you truly feel abandonment. Um, I feel like that feeling gets really muddled for people um, because people who experience so many things, um, but she really showed you like the true abandonment, like the true like first one that's like really, really honing in on you, like really, really affecting you. Um, so that's how you see her and that's where she'll affect your charts. And like, that's why I think, again, I think it's a disservice if astrologers don't talk about her because those are really key things for you to know. Those are really key shadow work things you know about. And I, like, again, she's really new. So it makes sense that a lot of people don't quite use her yet, but I really, that's a big reason why I want to do her in this class. Cause I feel like she's so much, 
she she means so much and she does so much for us and what she represents is so important um okay so before i go to the next chunk which is talking about chaos magic correspondences that attach her and how to worship her and how to work with her um i'll jump back in the chat and i'll get a couple see if you guys have any questions okay Great, thank you for doing this. I need to be for doing something. Okay, if you're still here, Terry, thank you for being here. Otherwise, I hope, like, I, I'm sorry I missed you. We might see her move to a new sign. Yeah, depending on how long we live. <laughs> yes, Morgan. Can't have children, but we as women should be able to have choice about our bodies and we should have the right to tell us what we think. Yeah, I, yes, literally. It's there for me. There is no, well, abortion if, like, this is a sign, like, I actually, I'm not going to get into this. I'm not going to get into this right now. If you want to talk about this, you can DM me. Um, I, That's as far as I'm going to go with that. Uh, Yes, I'm wearing an Arto shirt. It's my favorite one, honey. Um, Holy goddess. Eris? Yeah, she's the real deal. She's amazing. I love her. She's absolutely amazing. Like, what she does is amazing. I love Eris. I love Eris. And again, she's newer for me to be working with. I didn't start working with her until Roe v. Wade got overturned, which is in June of 2022. Um, so she's very new for me. But the relationship we have, like it, it was very fast. It was very intense. And what she's done for me has been amazing. Yes, honey. Naruto is, okay, not, okay. Uh, it's the first anime my husband tried to get me to watch. I did not get into Naruto right away at first. I'm not sure why. I don't know why. But then he showed me Full Metal Alchemist. And I fell in love with Full Metal Alchemist. And then my addiction and love for anime was never ending after that. Um, like, if our son would have been a girl, he would have been named Winry. Like, that's how much, like, we love Full Metal Alchemist. And we love anime so much. My son's middle name is actually Meliodas. Um, and his first name is Oliver, and he's named after the Green Arrow. Like, we're big nerds. So, yeah, like, yes, I totally get it, honey. I love it. I, I knew I there it. was another reason I loved you. You're a nerd, too. Yes. Yeah, I love you. Is there a password for the Zoom? Nope, it should use you. All you have to do is press the link. Yeah, all you have to do is press the link. There shouldn't be a password or anything at all. Um, okay, so I don't see any other questions, so I'll jump back in, because um, like I said, we just have to do worship and correspondences for her, um, and then you guys get to meet her. Um, she has not told me that she's unwilling today, so she should be here, but again, she's strife and discord, so we'll see. Um, okay, where am I at here? Chaos magic. So, brief. Brief introduction to chaos magic, just because if this is, like I said, this is central to her. So chaos magic bases its power on the universal potential of the creative force, which is constantly engaged by trying to seep through the cracks of our personal and collective reality. Um, so it's the understanding that chaos itself, it's not really a system or philosophy, it's a tool. It's the belief that chaos is a tool to be used. It's a tool to be harnessed and you can use it to apply to your life, to your philosophy, to your magic, to your everyday. It's a super primal and creative force. I honestly don't think, if I'm wrong, you can a thousand percent correct me. I don't think I know of a single creation story outside of really Christianity that doesn't talk about the universe starting and blooming from chaos um in some way shape or form whether it's in the form of a deity that represents chaos itself or it's actually from the void itself like outside of like christianity i guess islam as well too but abrahamic religions i'm going to correct that i'm going to say abrahamic religions outside of abrahamic religions most of them say like chaos that's the most creative force that we have like that's the most creative force that we have so chaos magic is learning very a variety of techniques to where you can gain access to them. Um, it looks beyond systems and dogmas. So it's there's not a lot of rules. Um, it doesn't come from like a book of shadows. It doesn't have any type of like prescribed ethics or tenets. Um, some people consider it dubbed part of the left-hand path. Um, I don't subscribe to that. Um, chaos magicians, we typically believe that the results justify the means. So when we're using chaotic energy, we wholeheartedly believe that what we are doing and what we're using, it justifies the means, whether people consider what we're doing to be black or baneful or dark. Um, 
I don't, cons like I said, I don't consider working with Chaos Dark. It's really not. It's a super creative force. There's a lot of things that can do for you. Um, a lot of motivation. Um, chaos magic can be used in rituals. It can be used in spells. It can be used in prayers. It can be used to summon deities. It can be used in a lot of different ways. Um, but like, that's a pretty basic overview rundown of that. And like I said, that's Kind of all I'm going to do on that. Um, working with chaos magic is a lot more advanced. Um, and that's a whole other topic. And I want to focus on the deity that we're working with. Um, but I just wanted to touch on a branch of magic that is used with her. Um, and again, with chaos magic, like you pretty much, like I said, you believe that everything is a part of chaos. Um, which, huge reason why I use it. I'm all about order, but order is within chaos. Like you need chaos to have order and structure and you need order and structure to have chaos. Like you need both. Cause again, I'm all about duality and balance. So I pull from both. Sometimes it's what's a little hard, but that's why you work on finding balance. Um, so then when it comes to correspondences to her, if you have not been in class with me before, what a correspondence is, is it is an item, a totem. It's a way, it's a symbol. It's a physical thing it's a man like it is a way to be able to have an energetic connection to a deity an archetype energy to anything that you're trying to call on so a correspondence is something that will symbolize represent it's a way to have an energetic connection and a tie to it um so some correspondences that you'll see is just by using names and even verbiage is considered a correspondence so calling her a goddess of chaos a goddess of strife a goddess of discord um the dark um, the mother of dark deities. Um, those are considered correspondences. Colors are going to be black, red, gold, and gray. Um, I have a lot more luck with red, um, personally, um, with blood and bloodshed and war. That, I think that's why. Also gold, because um, I think it's a little bit of for me, I get the gold being attached to her because she's really sick and tired of being a scapegoat. She's as much as divinity and divine as everybody else is, and she's older than everybody else, and she has a right to be represented by that color. Um, it's a kind of like more of a defiance is how I feel when I pull gold forth through her, um, but those are two that I really have good times with her. Crystals, um, if you want gold and anything that is gold, like the gemstone gold, um, pyrite and any black stone, like obsidian, black tourmaline, any black stone, smoky, smoky quartz, um, any of those. Um, also jasper, any like black jas, any black jasper as well. Um, offerings are going to be pyrite, wasp, anything butterfly related, gold, gray, umbrella, strawberries, sandalwood, chocolate, alcohol, apples. If you can make it a paint, like a gold apple, um, that would be fantastic swords katanas like anything that has to do with knife anything that has to do with war um anything you could even do if you work with blood magic like this is a great time to do a blood magic like sacrifice offering as well um symbols that can be used with her are going to be the gold apple and then a circle with a k in it that is because the word ferris in greek like is spelt with a k um i can't i'm not going to try to pronounce it because i just can't do it um, and so like, that's why, and it, it's actually a very simple sigil to be able to use for her. Um, I, it's, it's the one that I use always. I always, that's all I use that always with her. Um, and then a golden apple of discord as well. Um, you can use for her and you can also pull on her planet, even if you just have like an image of her planet as well. Um, the goddess Nyx having her attached because it's her mother. Um, that's also a correspondence that I have found that works really well for calling to her and working with her. Um, she has a lot of respect for her mother. Um, other attributes and things that you can use for her are going to be an apple tree. Animals are going to be venomous snakes. Snakes, planets, again, is her dwarf planet. She has her own planet, so you can use her own planet. Um, you can also sometimes use Zeus and Hera to connect to her. I personally... I personally don't go that route, but some people can. You can also call to any of her children. She has great love and affinity for her children. She did not like them being entrapped in Pandora's box. That was, she did not appreciate that, like at all. Um, so calling on any of her children, um, lawlessness, forgetfulness, famine, disease, like any of them, including any of them, um, would be great correspondences and way to honor her and worship her. Um, when it comes to honoring her and worship her, again, chaos, magic, any type of rituals where you can include her, you can include her in prayers, invocation, um, anything that has to do with fighting injustice, um, anything that has to do with standing up for other people, creating boundaries for yourself, standing up for yourself, letting go of people pleasing. 
um, that's a huge way that you can start to work with on and honoring with her and worship with her and work with her. Um, any type of apple magic, there are lots of ways to work with apples um, that can also call to her. Um, some people say, no, don't do apple magic because some people look at it as like apples, like caused her to be a symbol of a state scapegoat. And like, if you subscribe to the fact that like Zeus and Aphrodite put it there, but I say, do it. Like she knew exactly what she was doing. The way she walked into that room, literally she walked in, she threw that apple and she walked, like she literally turned around, she walked out. Like, and she, like, she caused so much. It was just, I, sorry, I love it. I just love it. I love what she caused. And she did it so simply and so gracefully too. Like that's what I super, super love about it. Um, other ways that you can connect to her are shadow work, shadow work, shadow work. You will hear that every dark goddess that I bring to you. Um, shadow work for her specifically is going to be doing shadow work inside to figure out what your true cause is, um, where you can stand up for activism, where you can stand up for those that are disenfranchised in your community. Um, other shadow work that you can do are asking where your personal boundaries need to be adjusted, um, asking where you can fight for yourself and where you need to fight for yourself in your own life, um, and also calling to her for motivation um, and asking where you are lacking motivation, where you are avoiding things, why you are avoiding things, and why you are in denial of those things. Um, that's though that's what she's really really good for with shadow work um, and again as well another way you can connect her she's all about war and discord as well so if you do any type of training in like martial arts or working with katanas or bushido or kendo um, that's a super great way that I connect to her um, I work with Shin I work in Shintoism that's a that's a practice that I work in so I practice kendo and I practice bushido and having her there with me with the katana and with all of that practice is amazing. Like worshiping her that way and that physical movement and that that sacred art is amazing. Is chaos magic something you might talk about in the basics class? Do you, uh, do you want me to, honey? Is that a topic that needs to be added to my list? I'm gonna guess yes. Okay, I will add it to my list. I can't promise when I'm gonna get to it, but yes, I can add it to my list. Wasp, I get, but where does the butterfly symbol come from? Um, so a lot of times butterflies are seen for transformation, rebirth, and death. And because of her being a dark goddess and activism and shaking up the collective and shaking up society, that's considered a rebirth and transformation. So that's why a butterfly would be attached to her. Um, and it's worked really, really well. Out of class, and I'm going to message you privately. Uh, or hard for me, but I did love or some stuff in class. Okay, you can certainly message me privately. I have no problem with that. Definitely go for it. Um. Okay, so I did put in the study guide a couple of prayers that you can use to her. Again, use them as prayers. Don't try to invoke. I Every class I recommend, you need to be super, 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 like a very strong relationship with that deity before you try to invoke or summon. Prayers are different. Prayers are calling on them to like, to like, their, their energy, their essence, like wisdom, kind of like messages and things. Invoking and summoning is their, them actually being with you, um, like physically being with you. Um, so again, I recommend waiting like at least a year before you work with a deity, before you do that, because you want to make sure you know their mythology, you know their history, you know about them, you know who they are, you know how to work with them. Um, and the, it's, it's a friendship, it's a relationship. If you want to know more about this, I just did a class on deity work, and I also did a class on how to work with dark goddesses specifically, and you can watch those. Um, but again, in the study guide, I do have some prayers and invocations here for you. Um, so we'll stop here, see if you guys have any questions before I guys give you your five minute break to get set and get ready before you guys get to meet her. I don't think I see any questions. Okay, um, if you have not been with me before, um, so now is the time to where if you are comfortable with this, some people aren't, some people don't want to be involved in a sodomy or an invocation, and that's totally fine. I will never be offended by that. Um, if you want to stay, you can certainly stay. This is the portion of the class to where I literally invoke, summon, channel, vessel, all of those things, and I bring the deity to you so you can meet them and they can be with you. Um, I do it through like a meditative state. I uh, cast a circle, um, and then I call forth the deity as well. 
Um, and so if you would like to be a part of that, that's what we'll be doing next. Um, so in this five minutes, what I would like for you guys to do is I would like for you to, everybody has different terms for it, but getting into a meditative state, getting grounded, creating your sacred container, creating your sacred space, like whatever it is, the verbiage that you use, you will hear me use the words sacred container because I view with things energetically. That's how I, that's how I word it. Um, so if that is what you want to be here in a part for, go for it. You can stay here. I absolutely love it. Again, I won't be offended if you don't want to. Um, but I will shut off my camera now. I will mute myself. I need to get the altar reset. Um, and then I will, we will get going. Deep breath in and deep breath out. Deep breath in and deep breath out. I call to the spirits and guides. I call to the guardians and gatekeepers of each and every person within this circle here this afternoon. May you come closer, may you encircle each and every one of us, may you surround us in love, protection, wisdom, guidance, and an access and portal to our shadows. We honor you and we thank you for being here with us today. To the gatekeepers and guardians of the four directions, I thank you so very much for turning your gates to us this afternoon. We honor your sacred presence, and we thank you so very much for your guardianship. I call to the direction of east, the element of air, to the light of dawn and the rising sun from the mountaintops. I call to you the element of air to invoke movement in my life, to create an exquisite flow of energy, and to teach me to move with ease, both within and without. I call to you to the element of air to remind me to not be bound by my circumstances, my fears, or my failures. 
to teach me and to remind me to rise up all around me in a swirl of wind to allow me to shift and move in power and grace. I call to you the element of air as I honor my breath, the life force within me, within you, and within each and every person within this circle this afternoon. I call to the guardians and gatekeepers of the element of air. I see you, I summon you, and I thank you so very much for holding the Eastern Gateway this afternoon. I call to the direction of south, the element of fire. You're both a candle flame and a wildfire. I call to the element of fire. You're the dry heat from the desert winds. You are the lava from the volcanoes. You are a wildfire burning through the forest, untamed, full of passion. I call to you to the element of fire to remind us of the passion that we can have between lovers, between ourselves, and between other souls. I call to you the element of fire to teach us to kindle our flame, to make sure it burns bright and burn long, and it's full of inspiration, passion, and movement. It's full of activism, it's full of fight, it's full of desire. I call to you to the element of fire to burn all around me and all around those within this circle for your flames to grow and to create a fearless expansion within our souls. I call to you the element of fire to activate the courage within, to activate the courage within our wild spirit, within the collective and within each and every one of us. I call to you element of fire, the guardians and gatekeepers, and I summon you and I thank you so very much for holding the Southern Gateway this afternoon. I call to the direction of west and the element of water. You're the smallest bubbling brook and the deepest raging ocean. I call to you the element of water. You are waves that could rise and carry me above and you could also crush me and drag me down. I call to you the element of water, an element that I am mainly composed of. I would not be able to exist and sustain life without you. I call to the element of water, all the rivers, the oceans, the lakes, the brooks, the ponds. I call to you as you connect each and every child of Mother Earth together through your element. You feed us, you nourish us, you bathe us, you cleanse us. You can also drown us. You represent the cycles of life. I call to you to the element of water to teach us to move with the tides and to swim gracefully against things that no longer serve us. Not be bound by a desire to seek land and a shelter, but to be able to trust and stay afloat within your abyss. I call to you to the element of water, the guardians and gatekeepers, and I ask and I summon you to hold the Western Gateway this afternoon. I call to the direction of North, the element of Earth, Mother Gaia, and all of its continents. I call to you, to the element of Earth, for you are the trees, you are the animals, you are the creatures of all kinds. You are the insects, you are the bugs, you are everything. You are the flowers, you are the plants. I call to you the element of earth. You remind us of the massive expansion that we have to go within our lives. You have so many uncharted spaces within you that we haven't found just as we do within ourselves. I call to you to the element of earth. And I call to all the places I've previously lived. I call to all the places I've previously walked. I call to the ancestors. I call to their bones within you. I call to the dust that covers them. 
I call to you the element of earth as you represent both death and life and regrowth. And you teach us to be able to have complete expansion with our feelings and our emotions. Understand that we have depth and to be grounded. I call to the element of earth to ground me, to bear me, and to root me, and to be with me as I age and as I learn, and to create a supportive and expansive space. I call to you the guardians and gatekeepers of the element of earth and the direction of north. And I hate, I thank you so very much for holding the northern gateway this afternoon. I call to the guardians and gatekeepers both above and below. I call to all ascended masters, spirit guides, interdimensional beings, all deities, entities, supernatural beings, any ancestors, and any spirit that chooses to be here to both protect, guide, and cleanse, and nourish. I thank you so very much for holding the gateways both above, below, and all around us. I thank you, each and every guardian and gatekeeper. Amen. Aho. So mote it is. So the circle has been cast. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to breathe in and out before I bring in our DD. So I want you guys to make sure you're recentered, to make sure you're not overwhelmed by a circle being cast. Make sure you feel your energy being around you. I want you to visualize a space where you'd like to meet the deity. I would like you to work on breathing in and out and being grounded. So in and out. In and out. I need you to visualize your energy field and visualize it being open and welcoming to the deity being present to you. Whether you view it as a physical shape, a color, uh, just you just feel it. Everybody has a different way with their energy. I need you to be willing and open and receptive. I need you to breathe in and out, that you are willing and open to receive the deity however they choose to present to you. Whether it's a physical manifestation, whether it's a visualization, whether it's a sign, a symbol, you hear something, you taste something, you feel an emotion, you feel a physical sensation in your body. I need you to breathe in and out, that you are open and willing to receive them in whatever way they present to you. You need to breathe in and out that I am willing and open to receive whatever message they have to bring to me. No matter what it is, no matter if it's something I want to hear or not, you are open to receiving the message they have to bring to you. Mm -hmm. And out. In and out. I call to you, dear Ares, the goddess of chaos, discord, and strife, the daughter of Nyx, the mother of all dark deities. The mother of those trapped with inside Pandora's box. You can have my golden apple. You can be here with me. I fully appreciate what you did. They denied you an invitation. You were the goddess of chaos, the daughter of Nyx. You were one of the oldest deities written into existence. I call to you the goddess of anarchy who creates and destroys. I call to you to the goddess of destruction and war. The goddess of ferocity, of passion, of activism, of movement. I call to you, dear Eris, the collective world-shattering generational goddess who's here to awaken the divine feminine in a way to move and change and shake things up. I call to you, dear Eris, to please show yourself, to provide whatever message those here need to feel and see. 
Let them know where they can start to be activists. Let them know where they have injustice in their life. Let them know how they can heal from injustice in their life. I call to you, dear goddess Eris, the goddess of discord, strife, war, destruction, the brother of Aries. I call to you the one who's the last to leave the battlefield, the one who will bring men who are on the verge of dying back to their feet to continue to fight. I summon you here. I welcome you here. And I am ever so grateful for you to be here. Now I'd like for everybody to breathe in and out and remain open and willing to see the deity and the goddess, Eris, as he presents to you. He's showing to you as a goddess with the dark black wings ripping from her back. She's standing in front of you with a sword drenched in blood from her most recent battle. Are you seeing an apple? Are you feeling a massive need to just fight for others? Are you hearing battle cries? Are you hearing discord? Are you hearing strife? Are you hearing despair? Do you taste apples? Do you smell apples? How is she presenting to you? Feel her energy wrapping around you. Feel her entering your sacred space, your sacred container. Feel that within you. Deep breath in, and a deep breath out. Now, as she's presenting herself to you, however she is, I would like you to greet her in whatever way you feel comfortable, whatever way you feel acceptable. Greet her and thank her and give her gratitude for accepting your invitation, for showing up to speak with you today, for giving you a sign, for reaching out to you. Let her know that you're going to be willing to have a conversation with her. Let her know that if she is willing to share something with you, if she's willing to converse with you, she's willing to give you a sign, a symbol, a feeling, a sound, a sight, that you are open to receiving whatever it is she has to bring to you. Make sure that this is a visual, a verbal communication to her so she fully understands the agreement. Now is the time where you ask her, what is it you have to tell me or show me or bring me to, or bring to me? If you have something now is the time, I would love to talk to you. Converse with her in a way that lets her know that we, I'm ready to have a conversation with you. And what would you like to say to me? Now, remember, this may come in many different forms. Don't hold any expectations. You may taste something, you may hear something, you may physically feel something, you may emotionally feel something. She may say something to you, she may bring you somewhere, you may be having a full conversation. Now is the time. I will give you a few minutes to have a conversation with her while I breathe in and out and continue to hold her here for you.
your energy feel chaotic to you? Does it feel welcoming? And if it is chaotic, find the structure within the chaos. Find the creative force. Find the motivation. Find the message she's showing you. Are you just seeing colors? Are you seeing energy? Are you hearing? And again, don't be afraid to ask her questions to help you with shadow work if she's here and willing to have a conversation with you. That means asking her, where have you experienced injustice in your life that you haven't healed from? And how can you heal from it? You can ask her where you can become more active to help others in your life. You can ask her how you're going to fight for others. You can ask her how and what's the best way to fight for yourself. What's the best way to maintain your boundaries? What's the most important boundary that needs to change? Now you can ask her one last final question you'd like to ask her before you start thanking her for ever so kindly for being here and being willing to speak to you. To show you a sign, to give you a sound, to let you feel her energy, to let you meet her. Well, again, thank her so much for choosing to be here today. Thank you for giving her your message, whatever it is that she gave you. And now is a time to where if you would like to see her again and like to meet her again, you can make plans and set up plans if you'd like, or just discuss if it's even going to happen. And if she will be a part of your life, and if you'd like to connect to her, both collectively and individually. Now is the time to show gratitude. Now is the time to show understanding. Now's the time to develop any further connection you'd like to have with her. Well, again, one last thank you as I thank her for being here and release her. Your goddess Ares, the mother of discord, strife, destruction, war, the one who brings motivation, the one who brings us the power to activate, one that brings us the reason to be able to stand up for injustice both for ourselves and for others around us. I call to you, dear goddess Aries, the one who's shaping our collective and shaping our generation, the one who's going to bring forth the divine feminine in the most beautiful and most passionate, the most life-altering way. I thank you, dear goddess Aries, so, 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 so very much for being willing to be here to present yourself to the souls within this circle. To those that have connected with you, I ask that you meet with them again. I ask that you be willing to, to speak with them. I ask that you be willing to guide them. Dear Aries, the mother of all dark deities, goddess of discord, the goddess of strife, the daughter of Nyx. I thank you so very much for being here. Oh. And I release you. I call back the guardians and gatekeepers of the direction of north and the element of earth. I thank you so very much for holding the northern gateway this afternoon. 
and I release you. I call back the guardians and gatekeepers of the direction of west and the element of water. I thank you so very much for holding the western gateway, and I release you. I call back the guardians and gatekeepers of the direction of south and the element of fire. I thank you so very much for being here this afternoon, and I release you. I call back the guardians and gatekeepers of the direction of east and the element of air. I thank you so very much for being here this afternoon, and I release you. I call back the guardians and gatekeepers, ascended masters, spirit guides, interdimensional beings, demons, other entities, ancestors, and all spirits that were within the circle this afternoon from both above, below, and all around. I thank you for holding each and every one of those gates, and I release you. Amen. Aho. Sumo. It is. Okay, it looks like a lot of people left. That's great. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being here. If you're still here, otherwise, again, I'm sorry I missed you. Um, okay, guys, we're back. Circle has been closed. DD has been called back. Um, we're back. I hope you got what you wanted out of it. I hope you were able to meet her. I hope you got some type of experience with her. Um, like I do with every single class, meeting with a deity, being with a deity is super, super personal. I don't expect anybody to share what they experienced. If you'd like to, you certainly can. You can put it in the chat. You can unmute yourself and talk about it. It's totally up to you. If you would like to, you are more than welcome to. Um, if you haven't been in my class before, though, before we do that, I do keep my energy attached to you for an hour after this. So you will keep feeling that because I want to make sure you guys are fully like cleansed and purified. That's what I do. That's just who I am. That's what my energy does. That's what my magic does. And I don't want to cut you off super abruptly. Um, it just, <laughs> you might get sick, to be honest. Um, so you will stay connected to it for about an hour before it kind of weans off. Um, Eris, though, she is gone. Um, everything else, though, mine, you will feel for about an hour. Um, okay, so if anybody wants to put in the chat, feel free, you certainly can. If you want to unmute yourself and talk about it, you certainly can. But again, everybody, like, it's super, super amazing. Like, your your DD experience is all personal. It's your thing. You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Thank you, everybody, for the compliments in the chat. I super, I love it. And this is, I love doing this for you guys, so. Amazing, the curls. I was talking to me, and she said, yeah. Um, I actually, it's interesting. Ever since I've talked to Morgan, she's been all over the place and the curls have been all over my house. Um, they were gone for like five months and now they're, just, they're everywhere. So I totally get it. Thank you for your beautiful, what a respectful, gorgeous direction. Thank you. I, I super appreciate that. Um, mine is a little bit different than most people because I pull from a lot of places. So I really, really, really appreciate that. Um, and again, I try to pull from all pantheons, so you kind of hear it, even like in my closing. Have a great day. I super, super appreciate you being here. Okay, so if nobody wants to share, that's super, that's totally fine with me. Um, we will go. Oh, honey, I was waiting for your hand to come up. I just try not, I try not to go first in case someone else wants to go, and I scare them <laughs> off. <laughs> um, for me, she came in strong, but weirdly... We didn't actually go anywhere. I just got a lot of dragonflies. Interesting. Yeah. Um, actually, that makes sense. Dragonflies can be attached to the souls of children that died too young. And she is a protector of children. Okay. That's cool. I didn't so know that. that actually kind of makes sense. Okay. Um, so I kept seeing dragonflies. And she basically just... Oh, crap. My tablet's was dying. She basically just um, paced in front of me talking. Give me just one second. I have to go out to my living room. Pacing is very her energy. Chaos, discord, movement. She doesn't like to sit still. She does not like to sit still. She will jump around you the whole time you're working with her. For somebody with OCD, sometimes it's a little overwhelming when I work with her because of that. But I definitely get that. That makes sense that she was pacing. I know I'm. I'm just talking, so... I'm waiting for you to come back. I know you said you had to move to another room. Yeah, sorry. Just one Be second. One more second. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Um, 
and okay <laughs> and grab my court sorry um so she was just pacing back and forth and she kept telling me that she found me odd i i don't know why uh that's interesting after, like, the fourth time it was starting to get a little annoying because she would just look at me, say it, and continue pacing. Like, come on, chick, say something more than I'm odd. <laughs> <laughs> so I finally started asking her, okay, like, why do you think I'm odd? And she said, I don't know. So as for some of my energy, do you not like it? Do you like it? And she said, it, it's, she, she's about to say odd and she just kind of shook her head. <laughs> and, Interesting. Um, and we just kind of went back and forth like that she said that I, i'm very chaotic but i control it really well uh which okay. i know a lot of times i feel like that okay <laughs> um, that makes sense that makes sense okay and she uh, when i asked her what dragonflies meant to her um which she was surprised that i didn't ask her what they meant in general but I said, I'm not that stupid. I can look that up. So that's <laughs> when I asked, <laughs> what did it mean to you? And she showed me an image of like a bloody battled like a bloodied battlefield with swords still there, but no bodies. Hmm. Hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Hey. I, you're, you're tricking me to look into something, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> I seem to do that a lot. <laughs> you do um so and that's basically it she was pacing back and forth she told me that I was also overwhelmed and that that's not necessarily a bad thing I just need to get better control that makes sense chaos can be that way be super yeah. super overwhelming if you're not controlling it that makes a lot of sense it makes it sounds like you had a, did she bring you anywhere like like other deities do or did you stay in one spot no I actually, I actually just stayed in one spot she just showed me the okay. other stuff okay that's super interesting. I love it. You always get such good experiences. I love it. Thank you. You usually see colors, but you didn't see any colors. Um, that makes sense, though, with her being chaos and attached to the darkness and blackness. Um, a lot of times, like I said, the only color that I really like, it's the gold and the red. But a lot of times, like, if you're visualizing her, it will be a lot of black. It will be a lot of dark, especially with her attachment to Nyx, too. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, Mara, you can go. If I said that right, I hope I said that right. He doesn't want to unmute you, huh? <laughs> this technology, it does it. There we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> showing, my, showing my age. Um wow, I just wow. Oh, that was that was wonderful. This is my I did the class yesterday, but this is my that was my first class with you. And man, I am like Thank you for your guidance of me. And and I just uh just you're you're talking about uh Eris yesterday. I just was like, wow, I need to get to know. And I'm so glad you're doing this. I just I'm so grateful. Um I as we started, and I've got I've got headphones on and and it just started pouring as we were starting, as as you were starting after directions and just kind of yeah and and uh and i i i just welled up with emotion and like i've got a lot of shadow work i think to do and grief and trauma around my children's lives and what's happened to them and stuff and it was just it wasn't i wasn't thinking about all that but it was just this welling up of emotion that was i don't know just i don't know if that was maybe uh her her entrance I was I started off envisioning her when you were giving different possible visualizations and and what came for me was was um a kind of a like a dark shrouded figure but then I thought about the colors and and less red but more the gold and I just it was like she dropped away the cloak and she was just this 
phenomenally beautiful soul of like just just the golden splendor and and um and 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 that, that's all and I was like I had the, the headphones on I'm like is it and I like had to take off my earphone I'm like oh my god it's like pouring it just started and and then I just felt this warmth rush up inside like my heart my chest my uh so much my throat I often get you know something there but it was really just this rush of warmth and um and and then pain <laughs> and I I think a message I was hearing is you've neglected yourself so much in oh and oh and this other image came to me I've seen this art piece it's like a mother shielding a baby with a shield and there's these these arrows of fire being shot at the shield and the mother but she's like protecting okay. and and that flashed through my brain and um and then I felt the pain and it was like this rush of warmth and then like everywhere my body was saying it's it's you need the motivation to start like actually focusing on yourself a little whether that's exercise eating better, uh, dedicated practice, which I've, I mean, I've, I've been on this path for about um, over 30 years, but it's fallen away with all the stuff. So it was kind of like, and I'm shaking now, it's crazy. It was like this, you, you, it's just, I, I was blown away. It was a phenomenal connection. And, um, and I was like, so welcome to hear what I might not have wanted to hear, but I, I heard what is just truth, you know, and um, finding that structure within what's become a very chaotic life, you know, and kind of putting things back. So anyway, I just, I'm, I'm so grateful to you. And I absolutely love your respect and, and your knowledge. And I mean, I just, I'm like, whoop devotee here of you so I <laughs> I just I appreciate what you offer with this so anyway I'm going on way too long but I just that was beautiful and I'm I I feel like welcomed by a possibility of future connection with her and thank you I just thank you thank so you much. so much first for all those comments I really love it this is this is why I do this like this is why I do this so I love it I love it I love it Second, like, I would greatly encourage, like, please try to pull to her, um, especially the experience that you had. It was so beautiful what she was showing to you. Um, that's another way that she really was represented to me as well, um, like, reminding me that I really needed to focus on myself. And that's what got me into my dialectical behavior therapy treatment that's, like, completely, like, it literally Good saved stuff. my life. Literally saved yes. my life. Yes. And without her pushing me to do that, it never would have happened. Um, so like, really, like if she's pulling at you, I highly recommend be open to that connection. Be open to that Thank connection you. for sure. Thank you. You are Thank so you. welcome. Let's see. And there's a lot of amazing experiences in the chat to you guys. You guys had a lot of super amazing experiences and I'm really, really happy about it. Like you guys did re like, I'm super, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. Yes. She's super, super soothing when it comes to anxiety. People wouldn't think that because she's a deity of a discord and strife but because she's a deity of discord and strife she can show you how to work with that anxiety in like the best way possible like she knows how to harness it in the best way possible um so like it yes for her to be soothing for that makes so much sense let's see instead of it being okay so awesome do you guys have anything else that you want to talk about or go over otherwise we will call it good for today and oh my goodness who am i covering next week honey i do this to myself every class I should look beforehand and be prepared and know my schedule, but I don't. Oh, every class I do this to myself. Give me one second, guys. I'll go find it. It's oh, right. We have we have a goodie. We have a twofer. Um, hell during the day, and then at night you have the special Lakshmi celebration for Diwali. <gasps> oh, Lakshmi! Yes, that's right. Yes. So yes. 
So next week, Sunday in the afternoon, we're doing Hell, the Norse goddess of Helheim. Um, she is crazy misunderstood. She's got a lot of power. There's a lot to go over with her, even though she's not in very many stories. But there's still a lot to go over with her. And then in the evening, I am going to be hosting the third day of the Hindu festival Diwali. Um, they do it every year towards the end of the year. The third day focuses on the goddess Lakshmi. Um, she's not considered a dark goddess, but she is an amazing deity for abundance and prosperity. Um, the first time I worked with her, she literally brought me from homeless to having my own home in one year. Like what she brings for prosperity and abundance is amazing. So that's why I want to teach you guys on her. So that's what we got going next week. So thank you so much for being here with me, you guys, this afternoon. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys later. May I say one more thing? Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I, I just <laughs> want to say that she was actually the first one that said she wanted to work with me too. Who? Eris. Yeah. But, but like, like she actually said she wanted to work with me. I haven't yeah. had to have before. Rather than you having to ask first, because don't you normally have to ask? Yeah. Well, yes. kind of. They, they, they normally annoy me until I'm until I'm in a situation where like, oh, that's what that was. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, this is actually the first one that just came out and said we are going to work together. Yes, so I, I totally look into her. <laughs> See, this is also why I wanted to bring her forth because she's so important for the collective and I think she's so forgotten. <laughs> so I love it. Yay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you guys. Have a good afternoon.